Welcome back to another edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted. I'm your host, Sheriff Matthew Wade, and uh, we're glad to have you back. And this is shows where we feature lineups of people we're looking for and try to get your help in solving some crimes that uh, committed in the last week or two in Calhoun County. Before we get started, I'd like to talk to you something that's very important. I think uh, most people realize that we have a presidential election coming up on November the 3rd. It's very important to vote. Our country was founded on a democracy where everybody has the opportunity to exercise their right to choose in who our government leads, leads by. Our president, whether you're a Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, whatever terms you use, it really makes no difference. The main thing is that you go out and exercise that right to vote. And with COVID and everything else that's going on in our, in our world, that has brought up some difficulties, but I want to let you know, you've, you've watched the media and you talk about mail-in ballots and all this, and you really don't know what to believe, but in Alabama, there's already a process in place, it's called absentee voting, and the law has been changed or amended to allow anyone who wants to vote absentee can, and this is to help people comply or not be infected with COVID, and you have till October the 29th to apply for an absentee ballot. And you can do so by going to the Calhoun County Commission Office at 1702 Noble Street in Anniston, or you can call them 256-241-2800 or look online and find the Calhoun County Commission and get the information that way. You can actually go to the Commission Building and vote absentee Monday through Friday, 8 to 430. We really want you to go out and vote. It's very important. It's how our country was founded. So please, 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 Go vote, exercise that right, and we'll see what happens after that. But uh, thank you for watching, and I always want to thank you for uh, helping us with information. Since the show was aired, we've never had a week where someone didn't call and tell us where somewhere, someone is. And that brings our count this week up to 4,652 people arrested, six arrests this week, all because somebody was willing to help us out, and we truly appreciate that. It is a partnership. Your sheriff's office works for you, and we want you to know that you can call us and talk to us about anything. So thank you very much for watching, and thank you for telling us where these six people were. We'll be back in just a few minutes with a lineup and the first guest of the week. Scammers are now taking advantage of people's increased economic anxiety. One of the latest ploys is to phone unsuspecting victims and pose as representatives of utility companies. A scammer may identify themselves as your local power company. They may be able to identify your account number and even your name and address, but that does not mean they are legitimate. They may claim you are past due and your services are about to be shut off. Do not let the implied seriousness of this call frighten you into making a quick decision to pay. Instead, hang up the phone, then contact your local utility company directly using the phone number listed on your bill or on their website. Speak with a representative to check on your account. Never give your banking information over the phone unless you have placed the call yourself to a phone number that you know is correct. Utility companies do not demand your banking information by email or phone. They will not force you to pay over the phone as your only option. Any reputable company will never request payment by gift card, reloadable cash card, wiring money, or cryptocurrency. Some of the requested cards could be money pack, Vanilla, Google, eBay, Amazon, or even an iTunes card. But you should know that there are still many more variety of cards the scammer could suggest that you use. If they ask for payment in any form of these cards, it is a scam. For more information, you can go to ftc.gov or call me, Nancy Hilton, at the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office at 256-236-6600. Welcome back to another edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted. This week's lineup starts with Rico McCollum from Hobson City. He's wanted for a probation violation for robbery second degree. Felicia Brown of Oxford, she's wanted for failure to appear in bond revocations for possession of controlled substance and drug paraphernalia. John Bennett of Selma, Alabama, he's wanted for distribution of a controlled substance times two. Justin Parks of Aniston, he's wanted for harassing communications. 
Sebastian Lado of Piedmont. He's wanted for failure to appear on illegal possession of prescription drugs. Wilbert Dodd of Wellington. He's wanted for failure to appear on domestic violence strangulation. If you have any information about where these subjects are, please call us at the Sheriff's Office at 256-236-6600. We need your information, not your name. Thank you for watching the lineup. Hopefully you saw somebody on there that you know, and please call us at the Sheriff's Office, and uh, we'll come haul them to jail and get them off the streets, and it takes us working together to make that happen. This week we'll be talking about uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and have Eric Snyder with us as Assistant District Attorney with the Seventh Judicial Circuit. Uh, Eric, it's good to have you on the show. Good to be here. Great to be here. Um, thank you for, uh, for having me. Um, as we, we know, we want to bring attention to domestic violence in the month, and um, we, we're trying to do that this month and get that out there, and the dangers and the, uh, what comes with domestic violence well, um, in our criminal system, which we see every day. You know, as a law enforcement officer, one of the biggest and scariest calls we get is domestic violence. And you say, well, why is that so? You know, a lot of times we'll have somebody, a lot of times it's the female that calls, not always, but a lot of times a female call and you go out there on a domestic violence situation and then you go to make an arrest of the person and then the female's mad at you or even attacks you for trying to arrest somebody that they called you to come help solve the problem. Uh, whenever you got, uh, uh, romantic feelings uh, involved, uh, you just never know what's going to happen. Right. It, it, it's very true. Um, the calls y'all answer are very volatile. Um, some of the most dangerous calls you respond to. Um, the, the people that get trapped in these relationships, many times females, there are males also that get, are in these domestic violence relationships. We want them to know there is a way to get out and there is they need to file that report. Um, there's a thing called a protection from abuse. We, we, we can help them fill that out at the district attorney's office. Um, that can keep a perpetrator away um, and get immediate relief um, for that victim who is and, caught and in that and situation. And let's talk about right that. You know, a lot of people will call and, and protection from abuse, PFA. A lot of people call them restraining orders. And there's a lot of uh, myths and there's a lot of uh, unknowing you know, I have people call me and go, hey, my neighbor's bothering me. I want to get a, a restraining order. I go, well, you can't get a restraining order because your neighbor's bothering you unless you're in a romantic relationship with them. Can you, so getting a PFA is not really that right. easy. It's, I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's just not for everyone. It has to have a domestic relationship to it. Can you tell us some of the requirements right. for it? In order to qualify for a uh, protection from abuse, you're going to have what's called a, a, a relationship that meets that qualification. Um, it's going to be a, a dating partnership. If the two individuals have, have a child in common, they'll qualify. Um, also, the legislature has put it in there is if they included steps, step parents or stepchildren, um, or if they're a household member that were involved in an intimate relationship. The legislature um, added the step parent, stepchild provision. They saw where that needed to be added, and I think that was a good provision. Um, it includes parent and child. Um, but like I said, most time you're going to have that, for the domestic violence, you're going to have that relationship, and also Absolutely. the PFA. There are going to be those qualified relationships you have to meet. But um, the, filling out the PFA will get you that immediate relief. Um, you know, and a, lot of, a lot of times you hear people say, well, it's just a piece of paper. It's not going to do anything. And I disagree because there's a lot of times in these type of relationships where these abusers know how to get right up to the law, but they don't cross the line. And so a PFA helps protect them in that situation where you can't get so close to them, you can't contact them by phone or electronic device. Uh, so it, it actually makes them illegal for them to be around them where otherwise, if you didn't have it, there's nothing law enforcement could do so while it is a piece of paper, it does allow law enforcement and the district attorney's office the ability to prosecute people who violate other rules that might not necessarily be against the law if you didn't have that protection from right, abuse. Right. I would definitely say it gives, you know, it gives law enforcement a tool to go out there and arrest a perpetrator Absolutely. who has, um, you know, when they issue these PFAs, they can be no, uh, no social media contact, no 
text messages, no phones, no in person, because we think about somebody violating a PFA when it'd be just in person. Well, nowadays there's a lot more ways to contact an Absolutely. individual than showing up at their doorstep. And social media, the way our world is turning, is, is right. people can be mm -hmm. harassed and, and uh, stalked in that exactly. same manner. Exactly. And also now, uh, a violation of protection order they can be arrested for uh, is a misdemeanor offense, um, punishable up to 365 days in jail. But on your third offense, it is now a, a Class C felony. Um, so that also gives it more. More bite. Right. Because it, with these individuals, sometimes they are repeat offenders, as Most we've the time, seen. They are. From my experience, mm -hmm. 24 years worth is uh, normally they are. Right, right. So we want to do everything we can to keep them off the, you know, keep them off the streets if they're presenting a problem for us and um, harassing, stalking. And I tell you, you know, people talk about domestic violence. I think one that gets a lot of attention. This week's lineup, we had one where it's domestic violence strangulation. Right. You know, that always gets the media's attention and gets, you know, everybody's, oh my gosh, strangulation, that's terrible. Mm -hmm. And it is. But can we talk about a little bit about what that law is or what it right. means? DV strangulation suffocation is when an individual, either by using their hands or using uh, another object, we've seen, uh, you know, something to put around the victim's neck, um, causes them to quit breathing, obstructs their airway. Um, and that is a serious felony offense. It's a class B felony offense. Uh, carries a punishment range of two to 20 years. You know, um, we see more than that than you think. In you the, do? The Netflix show, I don't know if anybody watches Netflix, but there's a new show out that's on the top, I think it's still on the top 10 most watched. It's a documentary about an American, it's called American Murder, where Shanann Watts was a, a young woman, married woman in Colorado with two young children where her husband was having an affair and he strangled her and killed their two children. You know, and that's come out just this month. It happens to be Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And I watched that series and I just can't fathom, right. you know, doing that to somebody you love, much less your children. Right. But, uh, uh, it has been shown as a, um, an indicator, a predictor for um, uh, violence. If, if a perpetrator is willing to put something around your neck, um, you need to go. You need, you need to get out of there. Um, you need to seek help immediately. Well, you know, in domestic violence, uh, we see the cycle where abusers will do something, then they show remorse, go through the honeymoon stage, and then it, the next time they do something again, it's a little more violent, and it keeps going and going. And, um, you know, these, these situations aren't, uh, it's, it's not as easy as going, well, I'm done, I'm leaving. Sometimes it is, but most of the time there's, People love each other. There's there's feelings there. You know, they got married. They have kids. So it's a very complicated thing that uh, it's just not that easy to leave. But there is help out there. And when we come back from a break, we'll talk about some of the help that's out there and some of the things that y'all do at the district attorney's office. Okay. So we'll be right back with the second half of the lineup. Welcome back to the second half of the lineup of Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Thomas Bird of Oxford. He's wanted for failure to appear on possession of marijuana second degree. Donnie Stewart of Oxford. He's wanted for probation violation of possession of marijuana first. David Kuhn of Aniston. He's wanted for a failure to appear for theft of property third degree. Rogelio Prado Cacho, Leeds, Alabama. He's wanted for a probation violation and trafficking in methamphetamine. Quindaris Fleming of Dalton, Georgia. Probation revocation for theft of property third degree. Susan Hicks, Decatur. She's wanted for theft of property third degree, failure to pay. Gawad Richardson of Gadsden. He's wanted for failure to appear on violation of domestic violence protection order. If you have any information about these people, please call us at the Sheriff's Office, 256-236-6600. Welcome back to Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Hopefully you saw somebody in the lineup that you recognized and know where they're at. Just the other night, about 11 o'clock at night, I got a Facebook message and somebody says, hey, I know where somebody's at. And we immediately sent somebody over there and got them arrested. So we really do appreciate you watching and we really 
take your calls, your texts, and your Facebook messages to heart, and we act as soon as you give those to us. So it is important, and we thank you for your partnership. But we're back with Eric Snyder from the Calhoun, Calhoun and Cleburne County District Attorney's Office, where Brian McVeigh is the elected district attorney, and he does a wonderful job there. And uh, one of the things that he does, we're talking about domestic violence awareness, is he has victim service officers. And you have them in Calhoun and Cleburne County. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about what they do and how they help people for, uh, that are victims of domestic violence? I, I would love to. Uh, Mr. McVeigh um, saw a need for the victim service officers and brought as many as our officers ever had. Right now we have approximately three or four victim service officers. Um, we have two in Cleveland County um, serving that county. We also have a few in Calhoun County. Um, our victim service officers are somewhat of the front line uh, for contact with our victims. When they, uh, a victim. Well, you know, we work in it every day. Right. You know, when somebody's a victim of a crime, right. it's easy for us to go, well, you know, this is routine or they should know, you know, we know the process and steps, but a lot of these people don't. Right. So right. they need that person that says, hey, this is your options and this is what you do. Right. If an individual is seeking a PFA, a protection from abuse, they would um, come to our DA's office in Calhoun County. Um, a VSO would sit down with them, um, help them fill out the um, application for a PFA. Um, advise them if they need resources such as a shelter, such as um, any type of assistance they may need, we'll do everything we can to help them with that. Um, and there's wonderful organizations in Calhoun County, Second Chance right. is one of those where they have a shelter for women that are seeking to leave a bad relationship and need somewhere to hide and stay safe. Correct. The victim service officer can help them with that, a deputy that, sheriff could help them with that. Very much so. Um, Places like Second Chance provide a uh, great resource um, for people that are in these in these um, intimate and violent relationships. Uh, many times, these uh, people seeking the protection will have children. Um, they have nowhere to go. The only house they're in is the house they live in with the uh, perpetrator, the abuser. So these situations are very, very difficult on you know, an individual leaving. And we've actually run into this several times, and it's actually some help for pets. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody says, well, I'm going to take my children, but I want to bring my children's dog with me, too. And there used to be a problem with that. And we've now gotten help where we can make sure that those pets are taken with those children as well. Because, you know, a lot of people consider their pets as a family member. And, and one thing that I've seen over my 24 years of domestic violence is people won't leave because of stuff. You know, I've seen people get killed because I'm not going to let them have the house or that's my car or that's my furniture. And we really got to get out of that where it's just stuff. You can replace it. You can't replace kids in life. But people a lot of times will stay because of monetary items such as a home and things. Right. So they, that, they definitely will. Like I said, it's so, there's so many inter, interwined uh, aspects. And you have financial aspects. Uh, control um, because domestic violence is all about control. The perpetrator is controlling the victim and controlling mm -hmm. their actions. And one of the most dangerous times in a domestic violence relationship is when when they do leave. Um, when, the, when the hand's been forced right. is when something will happen. Um, they feel as if they lost control and um, many times they were resort to, resort to violence. So we got to take a break. Before we take a break, I want you to give out the number of the district attorney's office where they can call a VSO or a victim service officer and anybody that's watching this show can get help they need. They can always call 911, they can call the sheriff's office, right. but if they want to talk to a, v a victim service officer about a PFA or some of this, what, who can they call? Right. You can call um, our district attorney's office. Um, the district attorney is Brian McVeigh. You can reach us at 256-231-1770 and that's to speak to a victim service officer and um, we will provide you with what you need and get you the help you need and um, apply for that protection from abuse. We appreciate you being on the show, Eric, and if we can ever help you, please let us know the work you do and Brian McVeigh does is very important and law enforcement officers stand behind you on that work. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for everything you do too, Sheriff. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you. you. We'll be back with the help. We'll be back in just a moment with the crime section of Most Wanted. 
Welcome back to Calhoun County's Most Wanted. This is the segment of the show where we ask for your help to solve some crimes. Between October the 2nd and 5th of this year, a local resident attempt, attempted to sell a vehicle online. He was contacted by someone out of state who requested to buy the vehicle by paying with a check that was more than the amount of the vehicle. That is where, at that point, that is where you know something is wrong. The seller agreed to take the check, cashed it, and sent the remaining overage back to the victim, back to the buyer through Bitcoin. It was $4,000. After they sent the money through Bitcoin, which is an electronic form of money, the bank called the seller and said the check was fraudulent. Anytime somebody tries to buy something and pay more than what the amount is and have you send something back, that is a sure enough sign of a scam. Don't do it. Never believe in a check. Never send something back more than what you got. Between October the 5th and October the 6th, an unknown person stole a tailgate off a 2013 Silver Ford F-150 on a location of Highway 431 in Alexandria. If you have any information about these cases, please call 256-236-6600. We normally do crazy criminal, but I want to take a few seconds to encourage people that have Netflix to watch the documentary about American murder, where Shanann Watts is killed by her husband and also her two children. If you're in a bad relationship, call 911, call the sheriff's office. We want to find a way to help you. We love you. Take care. If you need us, call us. I'm your sheriff, Matthew Wade.